Uh, so just uh, let's make sure, yeah, Shabab, uh, that we have achieved all of the objectives uh, of this section. These are the main objectives of this section. If you remember, we have, uh, I think we have accomplished all of these objectives, but let's, let's uh, go together and uh, check them. So we said, yeah, Shabab, at the beginning that the derivative, the first derivative will affect, of course, the graph of the function. How, how, what, what does it tell us about it? So let's say that we have a function y equals f of x, and here x, it is in the domain, or let, let's say it is an interval, or it is in a in specific interval here. Now, the first thing that we had is the, the increasing, decreasing test. Do you remember what does this test tell us? It says what? If the first derivative is positive or for some values of x inside some intervals, and when it is negative, what we have? If it is positive, what we have? Increasing. The function, the function is will be increasing. And if it is negative, the function will be decreasing. Okay? And you know also when it is zero, when the derivative is zero or does not exist, what do we have? Asymptotes. No. We should mention it here. If the derivative is zero or does not exist. Critical value. We have, we have let's say, let's say at C, at some numbers, at C. If the derivative at C is zero and then C, C is in the domain, and it should be also in the domain. So let's say here, C is in the domain. First of all, it should be in the domain. C, it is in the domain of the function and the derivative at that number is zero or does not exist, then C is a critical number. Let's just make it short like that. It is a critical number. So here uh, the function is increasing. Here the function is decreasing. So this is the first, uh, the first, uh, so the, the first test that we had, the, 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 the ID test. The first derivative test, what does it say, Shabab? Do you remember the first derivative test? What does it say? It says what? If what? It is about what the first derivative test? It is about the local and uh, the local maximum and the minimum values. So it says that if the if you have a number C, let's say a critical number, if the function change from being increasing to decreasing, what we have, and if we ch if it is changed to be uh, from uh, from decreasing to increasing, so. Here, the first derivative here, the first derivative here is positive. Here, the first derivative is negative. So what we have in this case, maximum. we have what? Local, local maximum. In here, in this case, we have what? We have local minimum, okay? So you know what we mean by the concavity up and down. So the concavity test, it is about what does the second derivative tell us about the, the first, uh, the, the, the original function. Do you remember the, the concavity test? It is about if you have, if you have, if the first derivative, if uh, the second derivative, I mean, if the second derivative at some interval over some interval is positive, what we have, and if it is negative, what we have. If the second derivative is positive, this means that the graph of the function will concave up, CU will be concaving up. And if it is uh, negative, then the function will concave down. The graph of the function will concave down like this. The inflection point. So the inflection point, it is the point uh, after it. Let's say this is the inflection point P. So after it, it will be uh, concaving up and after that concaving down or the opposite. So if this happening, it, it is the point at which the, the concavity will be changed from upward to downward. The final test that we had, I think we have stopped at this one, at this part. We didn't achieve it completely, this objective. So what we said about the second derivative, do you remember, Shabab? The second derivative test says what? If the derivative at some number is zero, then we have two cases. If the second derivative at that number is positive, what will happen? If the second derivative at that number is negative, what will happen? Do you remember? 
So first of all, it should be critical number. It should be uh, the derivative at that number should be zero. So if the if the second derivative is positive, then we have what? We have local minimum at that number. And if it is negative, we have local maximum. And we have mentioned, Ya Shabab, that we don't need always, we don't need this test because we have a test for the local maximum, the local minimum, the first derivative test. So mainly we need the second derivative for concavity up and down, but also it is okay, it is important in some, in some problems. You cannot decide from there, you can use this one. But I said, I will repeat that several times, the first derivative test is more effective. We will see that together with some examples, okay? So uh, this is the increasing decreasing test, Shabab, or shortly the ID test. And we had an example about it. The first derivative test, uh, we mentioned that it is about where it is changed from increasing to decreasing. You have local maximum, local minimum. Here we have neither because it doesn't change. It's still increasing always. Here it is decreasing always. Uh, we have we had these examples uh, for the concavity up and down. Uh, so if the first derivative, uh, if the second derivative is positive, it concaves upwards. If it is negative, it concaves downwards. The inflection point, it is the point at which the graph will, in, will change from concavity down to up or from up to down. You can use this information to sketch the graphs, but of course you need to add a up some issues from your previous knowledge, from your previous experience to sketch the graph. Usually we will not ask you to sketch the graph in the, especially in the multiple choice exams. But of course we will check that you are able to do that by asking you to find the, uh, the inflection points, the critical numbers, the maximum, the minimum values, local or absolute, uh, to find also the horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes and so on. So what I advise you, Shabab, to do when you want to sketch a graph is to remember everything that you need about the graphs. You know, to sketch a graph, you need to find the end behavior. What will happen when it is goes to infinity or negative infinity? Uh, what are the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, uh, the horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes? Now you will add more things. Uh, where it is increasing, where it is decreasing, where it concaves up, concaves down, and also where it has a local maximum, local minimum. So all of these information now, they will help you to sketch the graph in an in, in exact way. So this is, I think, the last part that we mentioned. Yes, I think we have stopped at this example in the previous class. So the second derivative test, as I said, sometimes it fails. It, it tells us nothing about it. We will see that. So if you have, a, if the second derivative test is continuous near a number C, and uh, the first derivative at that number is zero and the second derivative is positive, then this is a local minimum. The, the function has a local minimum at that number. But if the, the second derivative is negative, it will be local maximum. But what, what about if the second derivative is zero? It is not positive, not negative, I don't know. In this case, the test will fail. The, the test will tell you nothing about the, the, this point. If it is zero, the function, the, the second derivative at C, it is zero, for example. In that case, we, we cannot decide. Let's apply it for this. So let's apply all what we have studied before for this function. Now, uh, what we should start with, yes, Shabab. Taman, he wants at the end to sketch the curve. Find but the let's, focus, let's focus on the, uh, on the, on the, what? the concavity, points of inflection, local maximum and minimum and so on. So it is okay to start with what? Find with the first derivative. Find the first derivative and the second, by the way. We need to apply this since we are talking about it. So let's use it. So you will find the first derivative, the second, uh, the first derivative, then the second. But of course, don't stop here because you want to find the critical numbers. You need to, to uh, factor it take four X squared as a common factor here, take 12 X as a common factor. Since this is a polynomial, Shabab, it is so easy. The domain is all the real numbers. So it is defined everywhere. Also the second derivative, the first derivative, they are defined everywhere. The domain is all the real numbers. And of course, Shabab, you should keep in mind something about this function. It is polynomial of degree four and the leading coefficient is positive. So what, how it will behave at the end? So it will, it will be up to the right, up to the left. Do you remember that? 
from yes. your previous uh, knowledge, from your previous experience. Now, since it will do that, it must, it must, it must, whatever it will do, what, whatever it do, it must have absolute, not only local, should have absolute minimum in this case. So, and you know, in that case, of course, it could be absolute and local at the same time. Now, we will try to find out what is this local minimum. So I know now that it has a local minimum. It could have local maximum, by the way, but it has local and absolute maximum. Taban, uh, it is also easy for you to, to, to know the zeros. If you want to know where, what, what are the x intercepts, take x cubed as a common factor, it will be x minus four. So you know now that this function, so look, look how much I know about this function. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. It will be here, up to the right, up to the left. It has x-intercept at what? At zero. Zero and, and at four. And at four. So it will cross the x-axis here. It will go down. Then it will come back to cross, and it will be something like this. Now I need to know, to, to decide what is this number, at, what, at which number, where it has a local maximum uh, or absolute minimum, and what is the value of that one. Also, I need to know where it is concaving up and down, where it is increasing and decreasing exactly. So this is what we need to do more. If it was just about the sketch, we can do it. Now, what we need to do, Yashabab, let's apply this test, by the way. Let's find first the, the where the, the derivative is equal to. Let's find the critical numbers. Do you remember what are the critical numbers? They are numbers in the domain. The domain here is all the real numbers. Don't worry. So here we need, uh, so this derivative, the derivative, it exists everywhere. So just we need to find where it is zero. Of course, we if for other functions, we should check does not exist also. But here, the, the derivative uh, is defined everywhere, so it exists everywhere. So there is no numbers at which it does not exist. So the derivative uh, equals to zero, the first derivative equals to zero, this means that what? This equals to zero. This means that x is zero or x is three. So these are the critical numbers. Now, if you want to check which one of them is uh, absolute, uh, which one of them is local maximum, local minimum, what you need to do, you need either to make a table for the first derivative to know where it is increasing, where it is decreasing, and where it will have minimum or maximum. This is one way. But you can also choose uh, use this test, just find the first, the second derivative, find the second derivative at zero and the second derivative at three and see what will happen. Let's start with the second derivative at three. What is the value of the second derivative at the second derivative at three? Is it positive or negative? Don't evaluate it exactly. Positive. If this is three, this will be positive and this will, so it is positive. So here we have what is up according to the test? Minimum. Local minimum. There is a local minimum at a three. So the local minimum here will be at three. What is it? It is the value of the function here, the value of the function at three. Go to the original function, both instead of x three, and you will be able to find out what is the, that, uh, that value. And we will see it next, next, in the next slide. Now, what about zero? The second derivative at zero. This is the second derivative. What is the, the, the value zero. of the second derivative? Zero. Oh, it is zero. So we have no idea. This test fails because we don't know. It will be local minimum or maximum, we don't know. So we need to check by using the first derivative test. How to check? It could be maximum. It could be minimum. It could be neither. So to do that, to check at zero, you need to use the first, the first derivative. So to use the first derivative test here, what we need to do? Let's do it here together. So to, to do that, uh, this is what I said, uh, since the derivative at three is zero, the, the second derivative is positive and the value of the function is a local minimum. Here it is, it is negative 27. The value that we are looking here, it is negative 27. Now, uh, for, for zero, we say that the derivative, the second derivative at zero, it is zero. So the second derivative test gives no information about the critical number zero and it, it fails. So this means that it could be, it could be uh, minimum, maximum or neither. So now what to do, you need to check, uh, let's remember together what was, what was the second derivative, Shabab? The first derivative, what it was. The first derivative was four x squared, four x squared times x minus three. Now we need to use the test 
at uh, what is, what are the critical numbers? The critical numbers at, uh, are zero and three. These are the critical numbers, zero and three. So we need to, to study now the behavior of the, sec the first derivative at this number. So man, don't worry about this, yes, Shabab. What are the zeros? The zero are zero, three. For this one, x squared, it is always what? So x squared, positive. it is always So don't worry about it. Halas, it is positive always. Focus on this, x minus three. What is the zero of x minus three? It is zero. Three. That's three. So x is positive. So it will be positive after that, negative before that. Now, here the function is what? Decreasing, decreasing, increasing. So here we have local minimum, and we know that from before. And it is not only local, by the way, it is absolute. But at zero lock, the, the derivative change, it does not change the sign. It is still negative, negative. So it is decreasing, decreasing. So here we have no, no local minima and maxima. So we, we, we have no local minimum, lo, no local maximum. So we know that it has nothing there, but it doesn't mean that uh, it always happens. It could, it could be local minimum and maximum by using the first derivative test. So now we need now we have to decide where it concaves up and down. So to, to know that we need to go back to the second derivative and decide where it is positive, where it is negative, if you remember. So what we will do now, we will uh, study the second derivative. Let me do it here, the second derivative. But we need to know first, the, what is the second derivative? Let's remember. The second derivative is what? It is 12, it, we can have it from here. It is 12 X times X minus two, 12 X times X minus two. Now the second derivative, Shabab, let's do the, the table of the sign, the table of signs for the second derivative. This is the second derivative. Now, what are the zeros here, Shabab? Zero and, and two. two. So man, it is also sometimes to include the, the, the critical numbers to, to have them. You can have both, both second derivative and uh, first derivative on the same table, but you have to consider all the, the, the zeros of them, both of them. So now, uh, after zero, this will be positive, 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 uh, and before it negative, because we have X here. X minus two, it will be positive after two, negative before that. So combine them, positive times positive, it will be positive. Here it will be negative. And here it will be positive. So this is the second derivative. Now here it will concave up, down, up. We are talking about F here. So here it is C, U here it is C D C U. So now I think we are ready to sketch the graph, Shabab. So to, to sketch the graph, you need to combine all of this in for oh, oh, there is something what we should mention here. Do we have uh, inflection points, yes, Shabab? The inflection point, this one it's changed from concaving up to concave down. So this one, this point, it is inflection point. This one. It is inflection point. So you need to find zero and what? Zero, what is the y? You need to substitute in the function. And two and what? They are inflection points. So here we are, zero and zero, two and negative 16. These are the inflection points at which the graph will change its concavity. Now to combine all the informations, I think we had an example and I, I, did, I did sketch the graph for you before in the previous slide. Here we are, look. You need to check everything that you did before. So this is the, the local and absolute at the same time uh, minimum. Uh, the behavior up to the right, up to the, uh, up to the left. Uh, at zero, it is zero. And uh, at zero, we have inflection points. So it should change from concave up to concave down. Look, this is the meaning of inflection point. Here at two, it was here before it was the concave down. After that, it will concave up. And of course, you can also check the x-intercepts. And uh, what about increasing and decreasing? We say that the function, we mentioned that it will have a local maximum and local minimum. Do we have a local maximum at zero? No, it is neither. Uh, we have only one local, one local and absolute minimum. Uh, it is increasing after that, decreasing before that. So it is decreasing before three, increasing after three. 
Excellent. Now, uh, as I, I, I mentioned this before, that the second derivative test, sometimes it is inconclusive when the, se when the second derivative is zero. Uh, in other words, at such point, there might be maximum, uh, minimum, or neither. The test also fails when the second derivative at C does not exist. This is another case. So it, it fails in two cases. In that case, if the second derivative test fails, what we should do? We should go back to the first derivative tests. It must be used in a C. Another example, we have here a very interesting type of functions. I have noticed that in the old exams, there are many, and also in the recitation and the homework problems. You should focus on this type of function, Shabab. You should practice it because when you find the first derivative and the second derivative, it takes time from you to do that. So what I did, I just here write the final answer for the first derivative. But how you obtain this, you should be able to do that from your previous knowledge. So let's do it together to practice. You should do that, Shabab. The first derivative, how to find it for this function. You will choose, you will use what? Product rule. So it will be the first one times the second. The second derivative, what is it? It is third times six minus x to the power what? Minus to the power two over three. negative two over three. Multiplied Are we by done? Minus one. Minus one. Multiplied by the derivative of the insider function by the chair rule. So multiplied by negative one. Plus, this is the first time this derivative of the second. Look, this is the derivative of the second, yes, about. Now the second multiplied by the derivative of the first. So this is the second. Now multiplied by the derivative of this. The derivative of this, it is two thirds x to the power two thirds minus one, it is negative third. Look, is it the same as this? How can you guess that? It is, you need to do a lot of work uh, to, to simplify it. Because why we need to simplify it? Because we, we, we want uh, to find the critical number. So we, we, we want to know where it is zero or with, where it does not exist. Excellent. Uh, also, I advise you, Shabab, always to find the domain of the function at the beginning. If you look at this function, who can tell me what will be the domain of this function? Or real number except six uh, and zero. Why? What will happen at zero and six? It is all the real numbers indeed. All the real numbers. What? No oh, problem. I was looking about the derivative. Oh. They are odd. No, no, I'm talking about the function. They okay. are odd yes, radicals, not, not even. If they are even radicals, we should consider only the positive numbers. Okay, so we need to simplify here, Shabab. How to simplify such type of functions, please? What we need to do here, Shabab, is to take a common factor. So the common factor between third and two thirds, we will take third. Okay, and between x to the power two thirds and uh, x to the power negative third, we will take the smaller, we will take negative third. Between this and this, we will take 6 minus x to the power smaller power, which is negative 2 over 3. Now open brackets. Here, divide third by third, it will be 1. This over this, it will be x to the power what? 1. Two third one. minus minus plus third, it will be 1. To the power 1. And we are done. Oh, we still have negative here. Don't forget it. So we have negative x here, not x. Don't forget this negative. Plus two thirds over third, it will be two. This over itself, it, will, it is one. This over this, it will give you one also. This to the power one. Now this is uh, the second derivative. You need to simplify this, Ishabab. To simplify it, what it will be? It will be one over three. This will be in the denominator, one over x to the power third. Also that one will be in the denominator, six minus x to the power two thirds. Now what we left up with up here, Shabab, we have what? Negative x plus 12 minus two x. So what is it? 12 minus three x. It is 12 minus three x. So we have here 12 minus three x. Now take a three as a common factor and cancel it with this three. So what do you have? You will have four minus x. And if you look, here we are. This is the, the first derivative in the most similar form. You should do that always when you find the first derivative. Now you can find the critical numbers. What you will do to find the critical numbers, you will put it equals to what? 
to zero. Now, if this is equals to zero, Shabab, what we have, we will do that. I will, uh, by the way, now you need to sketch the graph of this function. It means you need to find also the second derivative, the concavity up and down reflection points and so on, inflection points. So I will uh, leave finding the second derivative. And this is why I say the Shabab, if you can avoid finding the second derivative, no need to do that. Because it will take time now to, to find the second derivative now. Look, look what we did to find the first. Now to apply or to find the second derivative, you need to apply the quotient rule or, or the product, by the way. You can also write this in the, in the denominator and apply the, 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 and find the second derivative. So this will be the second derivative. I will let uh, finding that for you. Please find it and check your work. Now let's uh, find the critical numbers. How to find the critical numbers, Yashabab? We need to look at the numbers at which uh, the, the derivative is zero or does not exist. So we need to check uh, where it is zero. This will be zero where? Of course, when the denominator is zero. So it will be zero at four. Where it does not exist? At zero and six. Zero and six. Check the zeros of the denominator. So it is at zero and six. Are they in the domain? Don't worry here. The domain is all the real numbers. So always, Shabab, don't forget to check that the critical numbers, the critical numbers must be in the domain. If they are not in the domain, they are not critical numbers. Now we have the critical numbers. So what we need to do to make a table of values, the table of signs. So this is the first derivative. Now we have zero, four, and six. Now look at the first derivative. Uh, here, there is a term that we didn't, uh, we, we don't need to, to worry about. Which one is this one? This one is always positive. Am I right? Yes. Why is it always positive? Because it is six square. minus x all squared under the, under the, the cubic root. So this one is always positive. So don't worry about it. Just focus on this one and this one. So the zero of uh, this is zero. So this term, this term, after zero, it will be positive. Before zero, it will be negative. Now for this term, you have to be careful. This is not x minus four, Yashabak, as usual. This is four minus x. So if you have x minus four, if you have, let, let me, if you have x minus four, it will be this case. It will be positive to the right, negative to the left. But when it is, when it is, when it is, uh, I will leave it for you here. If it is four minus X, it will be the opposite. It will be negative to the right, positive to the left. You can choose any value greater than four. Look what will happen. So here for, for this term, after four, it will be negative. Before that, it will be positive. So in general now, the, the first derivative will be what here? It will be here negative. Here, it will be positive. Here, it will be negative. Here, it will be negative. So now we, we know that now that here it will be decreasing, the function, the function will be decreasing, here increasing, decreasing, decreasing. So what we conclude Yashabab here, at zero what we have? We have local minimum, am I right? And at four we have local maximum because it, it is changed from negative to positive, from decreasing to increasing. But at six, we have nothing. We have neither, neither a minimum or maximum uh, value. Is that clear now? You can Shabab, start now working on your graph from the beginning, find the x-intercept, y-intercept, the end behavior, and start uh, do whatever you can do about it. And of course, you can now start uh, thinking about the local and minimum and maximum. What else, yeah, Shabab, we need to do now? We need to find the inflection points, the concavity. So we need the second derivative to use the second derivative. This is the table. I think the table this way is better than using this way, as I mentioned to you before. Now you need to look at the second derivative now to know where it is uh, concaving up and down. Here it is. This is the test, but uh, let me mention for you by, by the U method, the usual method that we have. This is the second derivative. Look at the second derivative. What are the zeros that you may have? It is never ever zero, by the way, because the denominator is zero. But uh, it will change the signs uh, about what? Zero, 
and, and six. six. But look here, this is always what? Positive. Positive. So it is always positive. So don't worry about it. So it will be positive, positive, positive here. But look at this now. Forget about zero. Focus on six. You have here six minus x to the power here. All of them are even. So it could be what will happen? It could be, it will be negative after to the right of six and positive before that. You can actually just take a number greater than six to check that. Now here it will concave what? The function itself. The function here it will concave up. Concave up, up, concave down. You can use this notation or this notation. It is up to you. Okay, so now what we have, do we have here inflection point? No. Here we have inflection point. Yes. We have inflection point where it changed from concave up to concave down. So excellent. So you need to find six and what is the inflection point? The value of the function at what? It is six and zero. Okay, now you are ready to combine all of this information to sketch the graph. And you, as I said, you really, we, would, we will not ask you to do that unless uh, maybe in the quizzes we will do. Now, what you need to do, you need to combine all the information that you had before. Also, you may think about, uh, oh, he, he mentioned here the vertical tangents. Of course, the function has vertical tangents because the first derivative, it is undefined at zero and at six. So at these two numbers, we have vertical tangents where uh, you know when we have a vertical tangents when the derivative, the first derivative is undefined, does not exist. So here we have a uh, the graph should have at zero vertical tangents. So it has a corner there or a vertical tangent like this. Now, um, what else? Here it concave what? Down. And it's still concave down. It will not change. It, it keeps concaving down until what? Until six. After six and zero, it will change the concavity. And this is, this is what we say. Also, if you notice, it is decreasing here, increasing after that from zero to, to four. After that, it is decreasing. And this is also, we, we mentioned that before. It has a local minimum here and local maximum at four only at these numbers. So you need to check, uh, when you sketch the graph, you need to check all the information that you had before. Are they valid or not? The graph, of course, it might change. Uh, it might, de uh, the details of the graph, but in general, you may, for example, some of, some of you, they may sketch the graph like this. Uh, but of course, you have the exact values, so it doesn't matter uh, how it will behave like this, for example, it's okay. But m since we have a vertical tangent here, you should mention it also. Let's take a, I think we have the, another example and it is the last one. Uh, use the first and the second derivative of the function together with the asymptotes to sketch the graph. So let's start with the easier one, the asymptotes. Uh, this is of course a uh, previous knowledge. How to find the asymptotes of this, of this function, Shabab? You have now- And then it goes to zero and to infinity. You need to think about two things, about um, the vertical asymptotes, and the horizontal asymptotes. Okay, do you remember which one is easier, Shabab? What do you think? Vertical. The vertical. Yeah, let's start with the vertical. If if there is a vertical, it will be where, yeah, Shabab? This is e to the power one over x. At zero. At zero. So we need to find the limit of the function when x goes to zero from the right and from the left. So what it will be? Yalla, Shabab, limits, chapter two. Uh, positive infinity. In both cases? Uh, no, when zero uh, plus. Here it will be e to the power one over zero plus. Here it will be, let's say approximately, let's say it goes to, to be more accurate. Uh, one over zero minus. So this will be what? E to the power what? It goes, let's say also it goes, not necessarily equals. E to, e to the, the power, power infinity. What? Infinity, yeah. positive infinity. So this will go to where? Infinity. And here? Negative, Negative infinity. infinity. Which is one over infinity, e to the power infinity, which is one over infinity. So it will go to where? It goes to where? Zero. 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 Zero, not infinity. Aha. So what do we have? Where we have a vertical asymptote. So what is the vertical asymptote? 
the vertical asymptote, it is x equals what? Zero. So now, which is the y-axis. So at y-axis, what will happen? You should keep this in mind when you sketch the graph. When x approaching zero from the right, it, the graph will go to infinity. When it is approaching zero from the left, what will happen? It is not defined at zero. The function is not defined at zero. So we have open circle. When x goes to zero from the left, it will approach zero. So it, it, it might approach it like this, or like this, or whatever, like this. I don't know. So from the left, it will approach zero. Let's say it is, it is approaching it like this. And we will see that later. So we know now something about the graph from the beginning, just from the, from the asymptote. Thank you, guys. Yo, it looks like you still remember these issues. Good. Now, for the horizontal asymptote, what we should do, I should have to find the horizontal asymptote. We should it's find infinity. the limit of the function when x goes to where? Infinity and minus infinity. Infinity, infinity, infinity and minus. negative infinity. Excellent. So what is the limit? What is the function? This is our function. Our function, it is e to the power 1 over x, e to the power 1 over x. Now, this will go to where, Shabab? If x goes to infinity, this will go to e to yep. the power 0, uh, one, one. which is 1. And this one, when x goes to negative infinity, also one. Are one. sure? It will be e to the power negative 0, which is negative 0 is 0. Yes. So it will be also e to the power 0, it is 1. But right. Because this is always positive, Shabab, whatever the power is. So what do we have here? What is the horizontal asymptote? It is y equals what? y equals one. So now we have additional information. So this is the x-axis. This is the y equals one. This is the horizontal asymptote. Usually we write it with dots like this. Now we know that the graph is doing like this here. So it for sure, for sure, it will do something here like this. So we can say that the graph will be like this. So it's concave up. We will check that later. And uh, what happened here? We said that it will be like this and it will be approaching like this. So now I think we have some, some idea about the graph. It cannot be above it, Shabab, because it, will, it should approach zero from the left. Now, what we need, we need the first and the second derivative to help me to make sure about this graph. So what we will do, we will find the first derivative. Uh, this is the first derivative. You know how to find the first derivative. It is the exponential, it is the same, multiplied by the derivative of one over x. The derivative of one over x, it is negative one over x squared. Now, Let's find the critical numbers. So what we do, we put this equals to zero. And we need to ask ourselves where it does not exist. So uh, this uh, cannot be zero, Shabab. If you put this equals to zero, impossible. Because if this is equals to zero, it means the numerator is zero. And the numerator, it is always positive. It cannot be zero. So this, this one has no solution. If prime at zero equals to zero, that has no solution. What about does not exist? The first derivative does not exist where? At also, zero, at but zero. zero, it's not in the domain. At x equals zero. So this is a critical number. Can we say that it is a critical number? No. No, why? It's not in the domain of the original uh -huh. function. Ah, we should find the domain from the beginning. I forget to mention that. Look, you should find the domain, Shabab. Always start with finding the domain. So if you mentioned here that the domain of this function is all the real numbers except zero. So you can write it as all are real numbers just without zero. So it is not in the domain. So it is not a critical number. So to be a critical number, it must be first in the domain. So what we conclude from that, Shabab, no critical numbers, Here yes. we don't have. We have nothing here. So yes. no critical numbers, no critical numbers. So no critical numbers means what? It's always decreasing. It's always decreasing. No. No critical numbers means what? No maximum or minimum. Yes, no local minimum. No local maximum. Yes, Shabbat, if there is a local, you remember there is a theorem about that. If, there, uh, if you have a local minimum or a, lo a local maximum at some number, then this number must be a uh, critical number. So no critical numbers, no local minimum or maximum. And you can make sure about that. How? By studying the first derivative, sign. So make, make a table of, of sign for this, uh, for the first derivative. If you want, no need here, it is clear. 
Here, uh, we say that um, we, we, where we will study it, by the way, we don't know. Just we have uh, the function is not defined at zero. So this is what we have. But of course, no need uh, to do that because it is clearly, this is always positive. This is always positive. So what we have, positive over positive is positive. Positive time negative is negative. So it is always what? Decreasing, negative. negative. Always decreasing, and this will make sure that there is no maximum or minimum because it is always doing it like this, decreasing. But of course, it is not not continuous at at zero. Excellent. So this what we say here: the first, the second derivative, it is uh, negative for all for all the values in the domain for all for all x does not equal to zero. So it is in, uh, increasing always on the domain line. Now, if you want to do more, if you want to know where it is concave up and down, you can find the second derivative. And this is what we mentioned. So and if you want to find the second derivative, you need to apply the quotient rule. You have to be careful. And this will be uh, the, the second derivative at the end. If you look at the second derivative now, you need to find the inflection points if they ask about the inflection point or if they ask about the concavity up and down. Now, this is always positive. This is always positive. Don't worry about that. You need to find the uh zero of this it is negative half so this is negative half and it is clearly after after negative half it will be positive here it will be negative so here it will concave down here it will concave up and here we have inflection point okay that's it so if you combine all of these informations at the end this is the inflection point if you combine all of these look we said that it has a when x goes to zero from the right it will goes up like this it has, of course, uh, uh, horizontal asymptote at one. It approaches zero from the left. And it has also here horizontal asymptote. It cannot be crossed at the end. So if you combine the, this is the negative half. Negative half is here. So we have inflection point at negative half. So it will change from concaving down to concaving up. So we can do it like this. And uh, after negative half, it keeps concaving up. But here it is here. Here it is. It is concave up. And I think this is similar to the, the shape that we, we, we um, suggested at the beginning. Now you need, when you have your final graph, your finished sketch, you need to verify that all what you have uh, obtained before is valid here. This other shape of suggested exercise, again, I advise you to solve, especially this, the homework, because you already solved, or you will solve the recitation uh, exercise with, with your recitation instructor. But of course, it is important also to, to solve these suggestions. They will consider it when they set some problems for the final. And of course, the examples of the book, the exercises, as well as the old exam. Let's check that you are OK uh, and you can solve now this. Please, Shaba, solve this exercise. Find the local minimum. Oh, no, he didn't want, uh, he don't, doesn't want the local minimum. He wants it occurs where? where we have a local minimum, not what is the local minimum value. Find the local minimum uh, points. At which point we have a local minimum for this function? This exercise, by the way, this question was in 4.1. I, I changed it. I moved that one from there to here. I think you cannot solve it with the ideas of 4.1, but try. I think I, I will give you one minute, two minutes, because we don't have much time. Don't forget, ya shabab, we have, inshallah, next class, we have quiz number 11. And it cannot be delayed anymore. Uh, thank you, Jack. Yes? Well, thank you, Jack. Welcome. What you will do, ya shabab, to find the local minimum? The find the derivative. Find the first derivative. Excellent. Yeah, I advise you always to find the domain if it is easy. Uh, if it does not, it will not take time from you. Uh, if you look at this, the domain of this function is what? X is okay. X squared is okay. Len X, we have len X. So it is from zero to infinity. Zero to infinity. So all the positive numbers here. So if you obtain the critical numbers that they are not in this domain, you should reject them. So the first derivative is derivative of x is one minus one over six. The derivative of x squared, it is two x. So this will be simplified to what? To third x. Minus two thirds ln x, the derivative of ln x it is one over x. 
This is the first derivative, شباب. So what we should do now? We should check where it is zero and where it does not exist. طبعا it does not exist at what? At zero. At zero. At zero, it is not in the domain. It is not in the domain of the function. So you must reject this. So it is rejected. So focus on this only. Where it is equals to zero. So to find out where it exists to zero, where it is uh, equals to zero, you need to simplify this. So let's write it as what? The LCD is 3x. Am I right? Here you need to multiply by 3x. Minus here you need to multiply by x. So it will be what? x squared minus here you have everything. This is the derivative, Ishaba. Now you need to set this one, put it equals to zero. When you put this equals to zero, what you will have? You will have the denominator equal to zero. So this implies that uh, this equals to zero, three x minus x squared minus two equals to zero. You need to solve it, it will be x squared minus three x plus two equals to zero. You need to multiply by negative one. Now you need to factor this. It will be x uh, minus, minus one times two minus two. So we have here, Shabab, two critical numbers, x equals one and x equals two. two. So you have now, this one is a choice. This one is a choice. This one is not a choice, not a choice, not a choice. So if there is an answer, it will be only one or two. Now, if you want to use the first derivative only, put x equals to one, put x equals to two, what you will have? If you put x equals to one, you will have one minus third minus two thirds. Which is clearly what, Ishaba? Zero. No, I'm, I'm, where I'm putting this? We should, we said F, F, not, F, not the derivative, Ishaba. This is a common mistake. I do this usually, I don't know why. So be careful about it. We are talking about F, not the function. So what we have again? So we have one minus one over six minus two over third times ln one, ln one is zero. So it will be five over six. Positive. Positive. No, it doesn't matter. It's positive or negative. It doesn't matter here. We're talking about the function itself. Now, the larger, if the larger one will be the maximum, the smaller value will be the minimum. Now, both x equals two. It will be what? Two minus one over six. It will be two, four over, it is two over three. Minus two over three, len two. Aha, uh -huh. we don't know. Mathala, lo kanat hadi one, ya shabab. Lo kanat hadi one, mathala. Which will be the minimum? The minimum will be this. And this will be the maximum. But now we cannot decide the Shabbat because of this. We cannot decide because of lin two. We can make a table. Make a table for what? I need to find the local minimum and maximum, my Shabbat. Make you a can, table. Because of lin two, how can you decide, yeah, Shabbat? So you can make a table, make a table of values. Well, do whatever. It will not be that easy. You will make a table of value for one and two. You will see where it is positive, where it is negative. But I said again, you have to be careful about that. Yes, this is the value where it is here. It is. You can make a table of values and decide. This is one way. But there is an easier way, Shabab. What is it? There is one thing that we can do about. Find the second derivative. What will be the second derivative? The second derivative is zero, negative third, Negative two over three to the derivative of one over x, it is one over x squared negative, so it will be plus. So this is the second derivative now. Do you remember the second derivative test? We will put now the second derivative equals to one, the second derivative equals to two, and we will see. If it is negative, it is local, local maximum. If it is positive, it is local minimum. So let's see what will happen. Both x equals to one here, what you will have? You will have negative third plus two over three. What is it? Third, it is positive. So here we have local minimum. Now, if you put x equals to two, you will have local maximum. Check that. It will be one over four, it will be negative. So you have here local maximum. Okay, Shabab, this is all what we have for today. So what's the answer? Just again, Shabab. Let's miss this alarm. Answer this one. Yes, Shabab, yes. Yes, what you said? Oh, the answer is one? Yes, the answer is one. The local minimum, he's asking about the local minimum, the answer is one.
اوكي دكتور يس لما اسوي تشيك يعني طلع لنا اكس ايكوالز 1 واكس ايكوالز 2 نسوي الاوريجنال فانكشن ولا الديريفيتيف؟ تشيك وات يو مين باي تشيك هي؟ عشان اذا هي تسوي زيرو ولا لا؟ تسوي زيرو ولا لا؟ ما فهمت قصدك احنا احنا اصلا جبناهم لما حطينا الفيرست ديريفيتيف تساوي زيرو هم منين جو الاكس ايكوالز 1 واكس ايكوالز 2؟ They are coming from where? 